Chapter 8 The makeover was as nerve-wracking for Jackson as it was for Katie. He watched as Andrea directed a facial, a French manicure, a spray tan, a haircut with highlights, and a new wardrobe. Jackson never liked shopping, and he liked it less as Katie was pushed into purchasing some items that he was pretty sure she flat-out didn't like by the bossy Andrea. It was a good thing he was paying. Maybe they could return some stuff when Andrea wasn't looking. When she was finished, Katie looked gorgeous. Jackson had to grudgingly admit that Andrea might know what she was doing. Now he was certain that Katie was going to draw a lot of male attention. He didn't find himself to be too comfortable with that thought. He didn't want other men looking at Katie. He didn't want her to look like she belonged on one of those fancy magazines on the rack of the grocery store. Jackson tried to tell himself that he was just looking out for the interests of Katie's missing beau, the father of her child. Truth was, he had to admit to himself, he was starting to like Katie more and more as a woman, and that wasn't where his thoughts should be, he remonstrated himself. Andrea treated them to lunch, picking up the tab. During the meal, she grilled Katie on questions and wrote down a number of talking points for Katie's introduction speech on little cue cards. Andrea concluded that since Katie was the writer, she should be able to create a proper couple of paragraphs to memorize from the bullet points. Jackson figured he could write something appropriate. He hoped that Katie would remember it when she stood in front of J.D. Emerson's fans. Already, she was looking a little green at the thought of tonight's gathering. Remember, Andrea gave some last advice as they left the restaurant. Stand tall, shoulders back, eyes forward, and project some confidence. If you don't know why anyone would read your books, your fans won't know why they should support you. I will see you tonight. Katie nodded, feeling overwhelmed. It was a lot of pressure Andrea was putting on her. Jackson stood beside her as they watched Andrea walk away and bark something into her phone. She's a bit different than I thought she would be, Jackson remarked with a grimace. What did you think she might be like? Katie raised a now perfectly plucked eyebrow as she asked the question. She didn't look like the old Katie that he knew, and Jackson felt a little pain at that. Katie had been just fine the way she was. She had been pretty before. She had been familiar. Now she was achingly beautiful, and Jackson didn't know what to do with that. I really don't know, he said ruefully. I guess I just didn't expect her to be so bossy. Perhaps that's what makes her such a good organizer? Katie shrugged. She didn't want to talk about Andrew anymore. The agent had hinted more than once her interest in Jackson, and Katie didn't want Jackson getting any ideas about the leggy brunette. Should we practice so I can get better at this? You are paying me, so I should try to do my best. Jackson nodded. He wanted Katie to succeed. Not just because he needed her to be the face of J.D. Emerson, thus keeping the limelight off of him, but because he genuinely liked Katie. He hoped this would boost her confidence and be a good fit for her. Jackson would write her a proper introduction, too, one that made Katie shine. Not because he necessarily wanted J.D. Emerson to make more sales, he did, but because Katie deserved proper accolades. They spent the rest of the afternoon at the hotel, going through questions and her introduction. With a frown, Jackson studied Katie's tired face after their impromptu study session. Why don't you take a nap before the book signing? You look a little worn out from all the fuss of today. I am tired, Katie admitted ruefully with a small smile. It hadn't been the easiest to sleep in the same room as her crush. She had been painfully aware of Jackson's every move last night. However, I'm also afraid of flattening my hair if I lay down. I have no idea how to make it look like this again. The salon didn't give me any instructions. Still, if you're tired, you should rest, frowned Jackson. He didn't see how her hair would be a problem, and he would rather Katie take care of herself and the baby. I'm fine. I need to memorize this anyways. Katie grabbed the next piece of paper, reading it over yet again. Jackson didn't approve, but decided not to protest. He didn't want Katie to think he was overstepping his bounds as just her friend. And that's all he was, he reminded himself. When it was time, they made their way to another larger bookstore chain in the city. 
there were twice the chairs and twice the women waiting to meet J.D. this time. Jackson waited on the outskirts of the crowd as Andrea called the gathering to attention and gave her a quick intro about J.D. Emerson. Andrea then motioned for Katie to take the stage. "'Wish me luck,' Katie murmured to Jackson as she left to approach the front of the room. "'Good luck,' replied Jackson to her retreating form. He believed they had done everything they could to prepare her for this moment. He was proud of Katie as she stepped forward to the stage. Katie tripped over the single step and fell with a squawk, the book that she was supposed to read from flying from her hand into the air. The paperback hit a lady in the front row in the forehead, and Andrea dashed over to the fan, frantically asking if she was okay. Katie sat up and blanched as she saw who Andrea was fussing over. Jackson could see her start to tremble and knew she was panicked. He grimaced and made his way to the stage. Katie looked at him pleadingly as Jackson helped her to stand. He put a reassuring hand on her shoulder, talking to her in a soothing voice, much as he would with any frightened animal on his farm. It's okay. It's just a minor setback. You remember your opening line? Minor setback, she hissed. Katie grabbed his arm in a death grip. That's the congresswoman that I just nailed with a book. Jackson looked in disbelief at the woman Andrea was fussing over. Sure enough, it was the local congresswoman. He winced. Andrea will handle it. That's her job. You focus on yours, okay? Katie nodded. She looked a little frantic. Deep breaths, nice and slow, he coaxed her. Andrea finally stepped away from the front row and gave Katie a look of desperation, motioning to the stage. I think this is your cue. Smile. Katie smiled and began her introduction as Jackson drifted off to the stand at the back of the crowd again. Andrea joined him. Does this usually happen with her? Andrea asked in a huff as she adjusted her jacket. Is she always such a disaster? Jackson thought back to the keys in the dumpster and the many other times Katie had a propensity for getting in sticky situations. She was an adorable disaster in his opinion. Pretty much. I had to promise the congresswoman dinner with her favorite author as an apology. Andrea grimaced, pulling out a pocket-sized organizer and a pen, looking over her color-coded notes. Now we need to work that into the tour. Jackson was taken aback in a good way. J.D. Emerson is the congresswoman's favorite author? Andrea nodded and rubbed her forehead, frowning in concentration. Yes, plus I have to rebook the first event that J.D. missed. Well, I'm sure you can get it done. He had every belief that she could do it. Andrea seemed very professional about the whole tour when she wasn't bossing Katie around. If she would just treat Katie better, Jackson would think that she was a fine person at her job. Honestly? Andrea confessed, looking a little stressed. This is my first big promo for an author, and it's got me in knots. I would never have guessed, frowned Jackson. He hadn't thought that Andrea wasn't experienced in this sort of thing. She seemed to take charge and bark orders naturally. Yeah, well, Andrea looked at his faded jeans, work boots, and old coat. I wouldn't expect you to. Jackson found that a little amusing. He expected she wouldn't suspect that he was the real J.D. Emerson either. Katie looked up to see Jackson give Andrea an amused look. Her already frayed nerves frayed further. Katie desperately hoped that Jackson wasn't getting any ideas about his agent. They looked a little too cozy for Katie's comfort. She stumbled over what she was about to say, losing her place in her carefully rehearsed speech. Silence filled the room, and Katie swallowed hard as her audience waited expectantly. Was it hot in here? The light seemed a little dim. Katie dragged in a breath. There were so many people right in front of her all staring at her, all waiting for her to do something. She felt a little lightheaded from all the attention. Swallowing hard, Katie grabbed her notes out of her back pocket. Somehow, the cue cards flew all over the stage. Oh, dear, murmured Katie. She quickly started gathering the cards. 
Someone from the audience handed her the ones that had managed to fly off the tiny stage. There was no way that Katie was going to find her place or sort out the cards in a reasonable amount of time. She pushed the small stack back into her pocket, looking up in time to see Andrea staring at her in horror, and Jackson miming for her to open the book and read. I've lost my place. Katie gave an embarrassed laugh. I was memorizing what to say all afternoon, and now I can't recall a single word. Instead of droning on, I'll just read a little? This was met with approving murmurs from the crowd, and Katie gave a relieved smile before opening the book and retreating to the relative safety of reading out loud. I can't believe I have to work with this, a horrified Andrea breathed. She rubbed her forehead. I'm staking my entire career on this catastrophe in the making. Hey, Jackson remonstrated sharply. Take care about how you speak of her. She's going to be the death of me, complained Andrea, unheeding Jackson's tone. Coming here looking like some farm town hick, having stage fright, and kiboshing the congresswoman with a book straight to the forehead. Any more calamities, and I don't know what I will do. My schedule is already messed up. First of all, Katie looked just fine the way she did before you and your stylist got hold of her. Jackson stated firmly with a warning in his voice. It's taken a lot of courage for her to do what she's doing. You have no right to put her down. Who is Katie? Andrea sharply asked, giving him her full attention. Jackson clenched his teeth at his blunder. It's a nickname. Katie is a nickname for J.D.? Andrea was skeptical. I highly doubt that. What does it matter? Jackson curtly replied. The point is that you have been looking down your nose at her, bullying her, and making disparaging comments about her behind her back. Enough is enough. You are supposed to be the professional. Start acting like one and help J.D. do her best on this tour. Andrea bristled. What is the phrase you country people use? You can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Well, we have dressed her up and put on the lipstick, but she's still a clumsy mess. You are fired. Jackson was done. No one was going to insult Katie like this. You can't fire me, scoffed Andrea. You have nothing to do with this. All you are is her friend tagging along for the ride. She doesn't need to put up with you and your attitude. Jackson decided to put a halt to this. It would hurt sales, but he wasn't going to have Andrea treat Katie like this just to sell more books. Determined, he began walking up the aisle. Sensing that he might go to say something to Katie, Andrea grabbed Jackson by the arm, pulling him to a stop. Look, I'm sorry. I'm just stressed. I say things I shouldn't when I'm worried about the bottom line. I convinced the publishing company to take a chance on J.D. in the beginning, and have been babying her career ever since. Now I convinced the company to shell out a lot of money for this tour and publicity on the gamble that it will make more sales for everyone. If it doesn't work, I'm fired for real. Jackson gave her a narrow look. You need to trade J.D. better. If you can't do that, then this tour is over, and we will go home. Fine. Andrea held up her hands in surrender. She finally realized that he wasn't bluffing. He would have hauled J.D. off the stage tonight. That would have been the end of her job. I will be nicer. It's not my strength, I will admit it, but I will make an effort. Good. Jackson hoped he wouldn't regret this. If Katie had one bit of trouble with the woman, he vowed he would take her to task again. Jackson tried not to examine the protective feeling that had come over him. He went to the back wall, leaning against it with his arms crossed, studying Katie as she fielded questions from the audience. Katie thought she could make it on her own. She was barely managing. She needed someone to look after her, Jackson decided. He just wondered who that someone would be. Jackson fiddled with his lanyard, watching as they posed Katie for what was probably the one hundredth time tilting her head just a little so the light could capture her correctly or some such drivel. A couple of flashes later, they had taken probably the thousandth picture of the day. Katie had been changing in and out of approved outfits, 
had someone constantly fussing over her makeup or hair, and had been put on all sorts of silly props for the photo shoot. It was a lot of work for a few simple photos that would be used in the media. Jackson was glad they weren't doing it to him. Getting Katie to pose as J.D. had been the best thing he had thought of to do. The interviews this morning had gone well. Each writer, reporter, or blogger had been given half-hour slot to chat to Katie. With all the coaching she was given, she had managed to fly through the questions without a problem. By the last interview, she seemed almost relaxed with the process. Jackson couldn't have been prouder of her progress. Andrea flitted through the whole process, keeping an eye on how things were going. Miracle of miracles, she even praised Katie on how she had handled the interviews. Jackson could see that she made a concerted effort to be nicer to Katie, and he appreciated that. He didn't like that it had taken the threat of walking out to get Andrea to behave, but she was finally treating Katie better. Not one trip, slip, or mess up. Andrea came over to him, looking a little frazzled. Aren't you worried? I just know something is going to go wrong, and I can't stand the suspense. Why do you think something is going to go wrong? Jackson looked at her in surprise. Katie doesn't have bad luck every single day. You mean there are days where nothing happens? She bit her lip and watched Katie being posed with one of J.D. Emerson's books on a small couch. Someone was dragging a floor fan to the right spot and turned it on, making Katie look like she was out in a stiff breathe. Silliness, in Jackson's opinion. Who read a book on a couch with that much wind? Maybe if the scene had been set up to convey the outdoors, they might get away with it. He frowned, wondering just how professional these people were. Sure. Andrea shot him a suspicious look. You're just saying that, aren't you? Maybe, Jackson shrugged. He didn't mind razzing Andrea a little. She deserved it, in his opinion. What's her average? One per day? Two? Three? Andrea asked anxiously as she eyed Katie. It's like waiting for a bomb to go off and not knowing when the timer is set for. Relax, Jackson told her. She accidentally spilled toothpaste all over the bathroom this morning. I'm sure the cleaners are having fun getting it out of the hallway rug right now. I thought you said she was in the bathroom? Andrea raised an eyebrow at him in inquiry. It may have gotten on her slippers and she tracked a little around after she cleaned up the bathroom, Jackson explained, so I'm sure today will be smooth and disaster-free. Just as Jackson was finishing the words, there was a smell of smoke in the air. Fire! The fan is on fire! Someone yelled, pointing at the floor fan, which had flames shooting out of the motor casing. Another person pulled the fire alarm. People began to panic and run for the exits, pushing at each other. Jackson rolled his eyes. He found a fire extinguisher on the wall, pulled the pin, and walked up to the flaming fan. Grabbing the cord of the fan, he gave a sharp yank, unplugging it from the wall. Jackson then hefted the extinguisher, squeezing the nozzle and dousing the flames, giving it a couple of extra squirts for luck. Jackson looked around at the people who milled about, stunned at what had just happened. Fire's out, Jackson remarked calmly. He set down the extinguisher. You'll need to get another fire extinguisher. Are you all right? Katie asked him breathlessly. Jackson was a volunteer firefighter, but she had never seen him in action. It gave her a little thrill just to see him take charge of the situation so calmly. Katie gave a little cough from the smoke and waved her hands to try to clear the fumes from her face. Fine. Jackson was pleased that Katie wasn't hurt. He put a hand to the small of her back. We should step outside for some fresh air. Coughing again, Katie nodded, allowing him to lead her through the exit door. They were greeted by the sight of a small group of people, looking down on a woman who was sitting on the ground. Isn't that Andrea? Katie asked as she peered through the crowd. Sure enough. Their literary agent was holding onto her ankle and talking into a phone. Yup, Jackson said as he led Katie over to Andrea. Letting go of Katie, he crouched down, listening to Andrea's phone call she gave the address of the studio. You can tell them the fire is out, but they'll want to have a look at the fan anyways. Andrea gave him a pain-filled glance before repeating the information. I will need an ambulance anyways. I turned my ankle. 
What rotten bad luck. I really didn't need this. What with the book tour signing tonight, the meeting with the mayor tonight. I need to be there, not stuck in some hospital for hours. Jackson had a look at the ankle in question. It was swollen pretty badly. She would be lucky if it was just a sprain. He didn't know why women insisted on wearing high heels. They couldn't possibly be comfortable, and they were dangerous for driving and running in an emergency. The ambulance shrieked into the parking lot, lights on and sirens blaring. As the attendants checked Andrea over, she began calling out instructions to Jackson. I will email you the address. Make sure she gets there on time. Google the mayor so you know what he looks like. It's just a quick meet and greet before the book signing. Should take maybe ten minutes, and a reporter will capture the whole thing with a picture for tomorrow's papers. Andrea flinched as they put her on a gurney. She should wear the blue silk since it's at the Hilton. Rent a suit and do a proper introduction for her if I don't make it. Although I will be there, even if they have to amputate. Her voice was abruptly cut off as a paramedic shut the back doors of the ambulance. A minute later, the vehicle was merging into traffic, leaving a bemused Katie and Jackson behind. Does this mean the photo shoot is over? wondered Katie. I think so, decided Jackson. Why don't we have an early supper after I find a suit? Only if I get to come suit shopping with you, bargained Katie. She hadn't seen Jackson in a full suit in ages. While he might dress in slacks and a dress shirt for church, that was as dressy as most of the men in Pendle got, unless it was a really special occasion. Katie had to admit she was kind of excited to see how handsome Jackson would be when dressed to the nines. Deal. Jackson found the production assistant that had been very kind enough to fill him in earlier on what they were going to do and let him know that J.D. Emerson had another appointment that they had to get to. Since the studio was flooded with firemen and they had gotten a fair amount of pictures, no one protested at their leaving. At the suit shop, Jackson would have just taken the first suit, but Katie insisted that he try several on. If she was going to be wearing the blue silk that Andrea had picked out for her, then he was going to be dressed extremely well, and a simple suit wasn't going to cut it, she reasoned. Seeing the dollar signs being added to his commission, the salesman was happy to elevate the level of suit to accommodate the lady's wishes. Jackson rolled his eyes and acknowledged his wallet was about to take a direct hit. Well, hopefully there would be a wedding to wear the suit, too, as he reasoned that was the only way to justify the cost. Maybe Katie would get married. Jackson shoved away the thought. He didn't think he could attend her wedding. Katie watched him come out of the change room in another suit. This one was blacker than midnight and looked like a tailored fit. There wouldn't need to be any alterations done. Plus, it made her heart beat erratically. He was so handsome. That's the one. At Katie's beautific smile, Jackson decided he had lost his heart. It was hard to breathe for a moment. The salesman snapped off the tag. What about a swath of cloth for the pocket to match your dress? Oh, Katie's eyes fell. I didn't bring the dress with me. I'm sure that white will be fine. We could pick up the dress and bring it back, Jackson offered, hoping to make her happy. It would cost him a fortune in parking meter fees, but it would be worth it to see her smile again. No, regretfully decided Katie, that white is perfect. Besides, we'll barely have time for dinner and getting ready before the book signing at this rate. They managed dinner without incident. Afterward, dressed in the blue silk, Katie took one last look in satisfaction at her reflection. If this didn't knock Jackson's socks off, nothing would. She exited the washroom to find Jackson ready in his suit. Wow, he gave her a slow look of appreciation. You look stunning tonight. Katie gave him a happy smile, picking up her clutch and linking an arm through his. She wished they were going someplace like any other tourists in the city, rather than to the book signing. We look great. And we get to meet the mayor tonight, Jackson pointed out, then kicked himself mentally as Katie paled a little. Don't remind me, she muttered. I'm worried I'll say something silly or accidentally trip in front of him. You will do fine, Jackson assured her. And she did. Katie got through the small meeting with the mayor in flying colors. Jackson did a quick intro, and she took the stage to thunderous applause. 
once again looking entirely at ease and regal as she began her carefully rehearsed speech. Jackson thought she was shining, even if she had just professed that her nerves were stretched to the limit before she met the mayor. She's doing really good, a voice said beside him. Jackson was surprised to see Andrea with a single crutch watching Katie. Made it. I said I would, Andrea stated dryly. She gave him a once-over appreciative glance, liking what she saw. You clean up really well. Ever thought of doing some modeling for the cover of J.D.'s books? Amused by the idea, Jackson shook his head. I'm a farmer, not a model. Too bad, Andrea commented regretfully. If you ever change your mind, I have contacts in the right places. I'm not going to change my mind, he replied. If he thought he would get a lot of teasing back home over being J.D. Emerson, Jackson would be in even worse territory if he became a male romance cover model. He could just imagine what the guys would say. Better not mention to Andrea that he was a volunteer firefighter as well, he reflected. She might be asking to see him half-naked in his gear like those calendar guys. Not Jackson's idea of fun. I was right, though. Andrea said confidently. About what? Jackson asked, barely paying attention. Katie looked gorgeous in that blue silk. She was confidently fielding questions from the crowd. It was a far difference from the first book signing she had done. That she'd cause another disaster? Andrea gestured to Katie. You can't blame her for a fan going on fire. She didn't even touch it, protested Jackson. Then I suppose I can't blame her for my twisted ankle, even though these fiascos only seem to unfold when J.D. is around, Andrea said wryly. She didn't do it, he repeated stubbornly. Katie hadn't even been near Andrea when she twisted her ankle. Maybe her bad luck is just rubbing off on you. Andrea looked at him in horror. You mean like transferring itself to me? Probably, deadpan Jackson. It might do Andrea good to be a little rattled. Not that he believed that bad luck could rub off from one person to another. Normally, he didn't even believe in bad or good luck, except where Katie was concerned. She seemed to draw more than her fair share of misfortunes. Do you think she's going to make the deadline for the next book? Andrea asked in alarm. If she doesn't, would that be her bad luck or mine? Possibly both, he grimaced. In all the excitement lately, Jackson hadn't been working on the missing scene in his unfinished manuscript. The characters were still stilted and awkward on page. If he didn't get it done, all three of them would be in for some bad luck. Jackson glared in frustration at the laptop screen. He was no closer to making the story work to his satisfaction since he had deleted the scene the first time. He had rewritten it a total of five times, and yet the words seemed stale and uninspired. He just didn't know what to do with it, and now that he knew that particular aspect of his writing was flawed, he was having a hard time creating a moment between the two main characters that satisfied him. He let out a growl of frustration and laced his hands behind his head. Katie was just coming out of the bathroom. She gave him a look of concern. Unfortunately, the hotels in the area were booked solid with some set of conferences going on, so Jackson and Katie were lodged in the same room. Fortunately, there were two queen-size beds available. It was still too close for Jackson's liking. He was becoming more and more uncomfortable being around Katie. She smelled nice. She looked amazing since the makeover. Not that she hadn't before, he reminded himself. She was just too close for comfort and he was starting to wish for things he just shouldn't. Are you still working on that? Katie brushed her wet hair and leaned over his shoulder to read the screen. She smelled like shampoo and something uniquely her. She was so close, and yet he didn't dare make a move. How would that look, especially if she was in a relationship? She pointed to a paragraph on the screen. I like that part. Yet not the rest. Jackson growled in frustration over more than one situation. I have two more days to get this right, and then it will be late. I've never been late for a deadline. Katie frowned as she read on. It's not your best. 
I know, he said dryly as he stared at the words which just weren't flowing correctly. Hence the dissatisfaction I'm feeling. I have an idea? She bit her lip. Jackson watched her, not inches away from him, and wondered what it might be like to kiss Katie. What? He was ready for anything that might help. He needed to get this done. He also wanted to get back to work and get his thoughts off Katie. She was occupying more and more of his mind. Get up. Katie put down her brush, standing up straight. Come on. Jackson reluctantly stood as she instructed. What are we doing? Well, the characters are dancing, right? Katie grabbed his phone and had it play a popular slow song before setting it on the desk. She stood directly in front of him and put her hands on his shoulders. You be him and I'll be her. Maybe we can figure out what they would say and do. He slowly put his hands on her waist. Katie, I'm not sure this is a good idea. Why not? She looked up at him curiously. Katie had always wanted to dance with Jackson, and now would probably be her only chance. She decided to be brave and take the opportunity while she could. They were three feet away from one of the two queen-size beds in a hotel room. That's why. Jackson didn't give voice to the thought. I don't dance. I've seen you dance before. Katie frowned at him reproachfully. What I mean to say is, I don't dance well, grumbled Jackson. He wondered what other excuse he could use to stop this train wreck before it happened. He probably shouldn't confess that he was starting to have feelings for her. It would really suck if she told him she was in love with her baby daddy, whoever he was. Just give it a try. You be Monroe, and I will be Alana. Katie cocked her head to the side and looked at him patiently. Jackson, it doesn't work if you don't dance. Knowing that he was probably going to regret this somehow, Jackson gently pulled Katie a little closer and started to move to the music. What did you think about the house? asked Katie, repeating what the female main character was supposed to say. She waited patiently, and when he didn't respond, she repeated the question. What did you think of the house? I think it's a big place for one person, Jackson dutifully said Monroe's line. If his tone was a little flat and annoyed, Katie didn't pay any heed. She was exactly where she wanted to be, in his arms. A lot of people buy a home while planning for the future. Maybe someday you'll have a wife and family, she said softly, leaning a little closer. Maybe, he said a little huskily. Are you applying for the position? Maybe, Katie held her breath waiting for what was next. The atmosphere in the room had changed, charged with something she couldn't quite define. There were too many maybes in the dialogue, Jackson's brain foggily catalogued, as he moved his hand to cup her cheek. He lowered his head and brushed his lips against hers. She was intoxicating. He kissed her again, threading one hand through the hair at the back of her head, and the other hand going to the small of her back so that he could press her closer to him. She gave a breathy sort of moan, pressing herself against him. Jackson wasn't sure he had ever felt this level of desire for another person before. Kissing Katie was explosive. She fit him perfectly, and suddenly he felt a fierce ownership of her. He didn't know who the other guy was, but he wanted him out of the picture. He allowed his hunger for her to be reflected in their kiss, and she matched him. He backed her up to the bed, gently lowering her and following her down. She lifted up his shirt, her hands exploring, and he realized rational thought was about to leave the building. Jackson kissed her along her jaw, his stupid conscience making him ask, Do you have a boyfriend? Katie's brow furrowed in confusion. Are we ad libbing? It was like a bucket of cold water had been dumped on him. She thought this was still play acting for the book. Suddenly tense, Jackson dragged in a sobering breath. I need to think. I'm going to take a walk. He spoke probably a little more harshly than he should have, but he needed to get away from her for a while. 
He pushed himself away and off the bed, heading straight for the door, not looking back. An hour in the cold snow outside might be in order, he thought, as he shut the hotel room door behind him. Katie lay in the bed. After she let her heart rate settle down from the inferno that Jackson had caused, she analyzed everything that Jackson had said and couldn't come up with any answers. Why had he left so abruptly? Where had he gone? Had he felt what she had felt? The only thing she knew is that nothing would ever compare to what she had just experienced. Talk about first kisses. She decided to wait for him and ask questions when he returned. What had he meant when he asked if she had a boyfriend? Did he mean her, or was he still in character? Katie hoped that he was asking her, not Lana, from the book he was writing. If he was asking Katie, did that mean he was finally interested in her? Suddenly, she felt more nervous of Jackson Davis than she had her entire life. Could it be that he might finally see her as more than his younger brother's friend? What if he did? Katie would definitely look forward to more kisses like that, she decided. They were addictive. An hour passed, and there was no sign of Jackson. She knew she shouldn't worry. He was a fully grown adult, but it was nighttime in the city. She looked at his phone still sitting on the desk. It would have been safer if he had taken it with him. Now Katie was going to be worried until he returned. She hugged a pillow to her and wondered if he was upset about kissing her. She couldn't think of why he might feel that way. However, she wasn't a man, and she didn't always have the best judgment. She also had the worst luck. What if she screwed up before she even started with Jackson? What if he didn't want her, and had just been in character, breaking things off before they got too heavy? A hollow feeling settled deep in her stomach, and Katie wondered if she had been rejected. She pulled up the covers and hugged the extra pillow to her a little harder trying to find some comfort. It took another two hours before she slipped into sleep. Jackson found her curled up with the pillow when he returned from his walk. It had taken longer than he liked to sort out his thoughts. He sat down on his bed and watched her sleep. Maybe he was a first-kiss cynic, but there was nothing to be cynical about from that first kiss with Katie. He had never experienced anything like that. He needed some clarification where Katie was concerned. Eyeing his laptop, Jackson got up and turned it on. He had everything he needed to make the scene come to life. Jackson hoped his fans appreciated it. Once done, he saved the file and emailed it to Andrea. Thank you for listening. You can find the full ebooks, paperbacks, and audible books on Amazon. Happy reading!